Well, the Orioles hadn't been active at the winter meetings up until Wednesday night, but something you can always count on the Orioles doing is picking up at least one player in the Rule 5 draft. And that's what they did on Wednesday. It's the right-handed pitcher, Andrew Politti. We'll learn a little bit more about him and the Orioles minor league Rule 5 pickups coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles. Your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Thursday, December 8th, 2022, and welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb. And coming up on today's episode, we're going to talk about the Rule 5 draft, which occurred Wednesday evening in San Diego at the MLB Winter Meetings. Now, the Orioles, as they always seem to do, did select a player in the Rule 5 draft. Now, they had two open spots on their 40-man roster, only chose to select one player, but they also did not lose anyone in the major league phase of the draft out of their organization. Then in the minor league phase, the Orioles selected three players. They lost three players as well. We'll break all that down. And then finally talk about the other news from around Major League Baseball on Wednesday and also what Mike Elias said when he spoke to the media once again after the Rule 5 draft. But that's all coming up on this episode of the Locked on Orioles podcast. Before we get there, though, just did want to thank you for making Locked on Orioles your first podcast listen of the day. We're going to continue daily for the next couple of weeks, Monday through Friday, brand new episodes. Subscribe wherever you listen. Give us a rating and a review. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Locked on Orioles YouTube channel to stay updated all off-season on the Orioles moves. But speaking of Orioles moves, you can always bank on the Rule 5 draft, adding a player to the O's 40-man roster. That's exactly what the O's did once again on Wednesday. Now, they had the 17th selection in the Rule 5 draft. Now, not every team picks in the draft, so the Orioles ended up picking ninth in the Rule 5 draft because a bunch of teams skipped their pick ahead of them as well. And Andrew Politti was the pick for the Orioles, a 26-year-old right-handed pitcher who the Orioles selected out of the Boston Red Sox system. Now, a little bit on Politi. Again, a six-foot saw righty who is from New Jersey, who the Red Sox selected in the 15th round of the 2018 draft out of Seton Hall. Now, he was a starter sum, a reliever sum at Seton Hall, did have a little bit of a rough final season before the draft, but the stuff was good enough to go in the 15th round to Boston. And then, you know, he started in 2018 to work his way up the Red Sox system. And in 2022, he split his time between double A and triple A. Now he started the year at double A and was just absurdly dominant 13 and a third innings out of the bullpen. He had a 2.03 ERA, 20 strikeouts to just three walks and seven hits allowed in those 13 innings. And the Red Sox figured, all right, you know, he's 25 years old. Let's get him into triple A. So he goes to triple A for the first time. And to be quite honest, He didn't get any worse. He continued to dominate at the AAA level. His final AAA stats with the Red Sox in 2022, he made 13 appearances, two starts, and in 56 innings of work at the AAA level, Politi had a 2.41 ERA. He allowed just 38 hits in those 56 innings while striking out 63 batters, walking just 19. Opponents hit 191 against the right-hander at the AAA level. And there was some talk, you know, talking to Red Sox people, kind of looking at Red Sox coverage from September and October. We know the Red Sox were kind of falling out of it and and we're pretty much out of the playoff race for most of September. And there was some pool for potentially Politi to be called up to the big leagues in September. Now he wasn't on the 40 man roster yet, but when those rosters did expand, some people called for Politi. That's how good he had been in AAA And looking at some stuff written by some Red Sox beat writers, there was definitely a chance. Looks like the Red Sox were definitely considering calling him up to the big leagues at some point over the last couple of weeks of the season. It never happened. He was then Rule 5 eligible. And the Red Sox deciding not to protect him. They left him off the 40-man roster, left him susceptible to the Rule 5 draft. And the Orioles come in and scoop him up. Now, 
In terms of his stuff on the hill for the six foot tall right hander, it's a fastball slider curveball combination. His fastball sits about 93 to 95, up to 97. Most of this information from both Baseball America and from fan graphs as well. He's got a slider in the upper 80s that he goes to most, and then a curveball in the low 80s as well that he will throw in there. But he's kind of your typical fastball slider power reliever from the right side in today's game. And the Orioles are definitely stockpiling those guys and it helped them have success with one of the best bullpens in baseball in 2022. And for Politi, he kind of had an interesting time because, you know, he wasn't a full-time starter or full-time reliever his last year at Seton Hall. He was kind of in the middle. So when the Red Sox drafted him, I think he was still kind of in the middle. They had him as a reliever. Then, you know, a couple years later, they moved him into the rotation. And then late in 2021, they actually moved him back to a relief role. And that's basically where he stayed all of 2022 between double A and triple A. But when he went back to the bullpen, he actually fixed some things, got his walks down. They were a little high in 2021, but he brought him back down this year. And basically, Politi is going to fight for a bullpen spot with the Orioles. Again, the way the Rule 5 draft works, when you select another player, that player is placed on your 40-man roster. So the Orioles now currently have 39 players on the 40-man roster, meaning there is just one open spot at the moment, as I record here about 9 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday night. And Politi is going to fight for a bullpen spot because, again, the Orioles' bullpen was great last season, but not every spot is locked down heading into next year. You even have guys still in the 40 man like uh, a Joey Crable or even a Bruce Zimmerman who, you know, pitched so poorly, especially down the stretch that are in danger of losing that 40 man spot, certainly in danger of not having an, uh, a major league baseball spot with the Orioles next year. So there's still question marks in the bullpen. As I've talked about, unless these guys are dealt at some point, I think Felix Bautista, Ryan Baker, CNL Perez and Dylan Tate are the four locks in the Orioles bullpen right now, but there's other spots up for grabs. Again, some could be taken by starters like Tyler Wells or Austin Voth if they're moved to the bullpen because the Orioles add more pieces to the starting rotation. So it's going to be tough to get into this Orioles bullpen this year, much tougher than it's been in previous spring trainings. But the Orioles clearly see something in Politi with the stuff, with the track record, the great numbers in 2022 in AA and mostly in AAA as well. I think everything agrees, and this is in the fan graphs right up on him as well. He's pretty much certainly big league ready in 2023. I think if he had stuck with the Red Sox, he would have pitched in their bullpen in the big leagues at some point next season. So the Orioles aren't really, you know, upping the timeline on him. He's pretty much ready to go for the big leagues, which makes it a little easier to try and keep him around. Because again, in the Rule 5 draft, when you select someone, in order to keep them in your organization, they either have to be on the active MLB roster or on the MLB injured list for the entirety of the 2023 season. So if the O's want to keep Politi around, not only does he have to make the opening day roster, but he has to stay with the O's in the big leagues for the whole season. Now, we've seen the O's for, for years with Mike Elias, with Dan Duquette, take Rule 5 selections and be able to keep them around. Now, some of those are because the Orioles have been such bad teams that it's easy to keep a guy like that on the roster. You know, Tyler Wells, he was kind of bad early in 2021, but he got better, so that was easy to keep him on the roster, and now he's a, a big piece. But the reason why Anthony Santander is still in an Orioles uniform is because the O's, with his injury and with some struggles when he came over, were kind of able to hide him on the roster and keep him after they took him in the Rule 5 draft from Cleveland and then keep him around this long. Now, the Orioles are expecting to be much better and compete for a playoff spot in 2023, so it's going to be tougher to keep a Rule 5 pick like Politi around, but if he pitches into that role, he's going to earn that role. But again, the O's are now in a spot where it's not necessarily a lock that they're going to keep this kind of guy around. I mean, they took two players in the rule five draft two years ago. Of course, the rule five draft because the lockout was canceled last off season, Tyler Wells stuck around. Max Roller was returned to the Reds. They took two pitchers the year before that and returned both of those pitchers, Brandon Bailey to the Astros and Michael Rucker back to the Cubs. So Michael Elias isn't necessarily set on, you know, keeping these guys throughout the season. It's only if they earn it. And so we'll see if Andrew Politi will earn it. The Orioles, a little surprisingly, did not take a second player. They did have another open spot on the 40 man, but decided to skip their second round pick. But on the flip side, the O's didn't lose anyone in the major league phase of the Rule 5 draft either. I think most people, including myself, thought they weren't in danger of losing anyone. A couple of guys like Easton Lucas, Kyle Brinovich, Zach Peak were maybe in danger, but most of us thought they would not go, and they do not, so all those guys do stay 
in the Orioles organization. But there is also a minor league phase of the Rule 5 draft. And the O's did lose three players from the org in that phase. But they turned it around and they added three players to their organization from the minor league phase as well. And coming up, we'll talk about who those three players are and how they could help the Orioles, at least in the minors or maybe in the majors, in 2023. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by BetOnline.net, which is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this December. Because we've got the World Cup going on. We're heading into the quarterfinals, which start on Friday. You can get all the lines and all the odds on every game at BetOnline. And we're almost at bowl season, just about a week away from the college football bowl starting you can bet on all the games at Bet Online. Then you've got the NFL every single Sunday. You got college basketball, the NBA, the NHL, everything at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, if you're listening to this one, I hope you do, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. So it was a busy day in the Rule 5 draft for the Orioles on Wednesday, as it always is, kind of right at the end of the winter meetings. Orioles get Andrew Politti, the right-handed pitcher, out of the Red Sox system with their one selection in the Major League phase of the Rule 5 draft. Did not lose anyone in that phase, but then it goes to the Minor League phase. And the rules, a little more complicated in that phase of which players you can take. Generally, fans and people outside of the organizations don't really know who's available in the minor league phase of the draft, because it's all about you know service time in AAA and protecting players on the AAA roster. It's a little confusing, but generally it's a way for guys who don't get to AAA quick enough to get them into other organizations as well. Now, the Orioles have taken some guys in this draft previously. Last year, they got Cole Uvula and Nolan Hoffman, a couple of interesting relief prospects into the system via the minor league phase of the Rule 5 draft. And they added three more players this year in the minor league phase. Now there's some rules about these guys in terms of how long they have to be in AAA unless they're injured to keep them in the org as well. It's again, more complicated than the major league phase to get into, but just know the Orioles are adding these players to their basically talent pool in the minor leagues. Now the first guy they selected is right-handed pitcher Alfred Vega, a 21-year-old righty out of the Yankees system who was initially signed out of the Dominican Republic by New York in 2018. Now, he's a guy with a good fastball, got a nice looking overhand curveball, but he hasn't pitched above the FCL. He's had a little bit of injury issues in his past, still hasn't made it out of rookie ball, but in the FCL this season in 15 and two thirds innings, he had a 115 ERA, allowed just eight hits with 22 strikeouts to four walks. He's clearly mastered the FCL, and you will certainly see him in full season ball in Delmarva or Aberdeen to start 2023. And then uh, we'll see how far he can advance up the Orioles system. Next guy they selected is a left handed pitcher, Trey McGuff, who was a 24 year old lefty out of the Pittsburgh Pirates system and was a 24th round selection in the 2019 draft by the Pirates out of local Mount St. Mary's here in Maryland. Now McGuff grew up in Pennsylvania, but went to school at Mount St. Mary's, a local guy who I actually got to see pitch multiple times in summer ball all the way back in 2018 when I was working in the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League with the Baltimore Redbirds. McGuff was pitching for the Silver Spring Tacoma Thunderbolts in that league. Got to see him a couple times. Pretty impressed by the lefty. He was one of those guys where I kind of couldn't believe he was at Mount St. Mary's because Mount St. Mary's is one of the worst uh, performing Division I baseball programs. And I figured he probably belonged at a better program, but he did get taken in the 24th round. Now he's with the Orioles. McGuff with a fastball that sits about 92, 94, has a slider, a curveball, and a changeup to go with it. Kind of your typical lefty mix where he goes to the fastball and the changeup down and away to righties, uses that slider on lefties. I kind of like the look watching some video of him. Got to AAA in 2022, pitched 17 and two-thirds innings at the beginning of the year, had a 306 ERA, 13 strikeouts, just four walks, then had the elbow injury, was put on the injured list in May. And then in June, about mid-June, McGuff did have Tommy John surgery. So in no way is he going to be ready for opening day. Again, TJ in June means at best, the Orioles hoping to get him back on a minor league mound 
after the All-Star break, like maybe by August, have him pitch in the low minors to rehab over the last couple of months of the season and hope to be able to keep him in the org, have him as a full go to start 2024. But if he's a full go in 2024, he's maybe a guy who starts thinking about for the major leagues if he continues to perform at a high level. And then the last guy they picked up is a catcher. Orioles generally bring in a catcher in the minor league rule five draft just to get some depth in terms of catching in the minor leagues. And this catcher was Randy Florentino, a 22 year old backstop who they took out of the Texas Rangers organization. Also a 2018 international signing out of the Dominican Republic, five foot 11 catcher who hits from the left side, actually known kind of for his offense and not just his defense. Played at high A in 2022 and in 51 games, 180 plate appearances, hit 242 with a 332 on base, 353 slugging, four home runs, had a 91 WRC plus in high A and kind of, you know, not the everyday catcher at that level this year, but fan graphs had him as a 55 future value out of 80 in his hit tool. So not exactly a power hitter from the left side, but more of a contact hitter. And there is still a ceiling there for him as a prospect. Now, those are the three guys the Orioles brought in in the minor league phase. Guys sometimes do go from the minor league phase one winter and get to the big leagues that next season. It generally doesn't happen much, but it's happened before. But really, you're looking for these guys to become minor league depth. And if they do get to the big leagues, you're maybe looking at a guy like McGuff, maybe in 2024. But these are more long-term depth guys in the organization. Now, the O's did lose three players in the minor league phase of the Rule 5 draft as well. It happens to every team that has a solid minor league system. You just can't keep everyone. First guy they lost, right-handed pitcher Hector Perez was selected by the Rays in the minor league phase of the draft. 26-year-old right-handed pitcher who actually signed with the Orioles on a minor league deal in the middle of the 2022 season. He came in, eventually went to double A, had a 5-2-7 ERA in 13 and two-thirds innings with Bowie, although he had 19 strikeouts, just five walks, did give up a few hits. Perez was actually interesting. He's actually pitched in the big leagues before. He has made one big league appearance. It was in 2020 with the Toronto Blue Jays. Then they released him after the season. So he still got some upside, and I'm sure the Rays will turn him into something. And I would bet that he appears in a big league game with the Rays in 2023 next guy the Orioles lost was Jonathan Arreus I had no idea Arreus was still in the O system I thought for sure they had released him back in September apparently not the Mets picked Arreus out of the Orioles system 24 year old infielder who if you remember the Orioles claimed off waivers from the Red Sox this season ended up playing nine games in the big leagues with the Orioles 29 plate appearances went five for 28 with a homer nine strikeouts and a walk had some so-so numbers in AAA was put on the restricted list for a while was taken off the 40-man roster and then I think everyone thought he was released maybe he wasn't but couldn't believe he was still in the organization he's now a New York Met And the last guy the Orioles lost, actually the one I was most upset about of the three, was 26-year-old catcher Cody Roberts, who was selected by the Phillies in this minor league phase of the draft. He was an 11th round pick by the Orioles in 2018 out of North Carolina, and he did get to AAA this season, but in AA this year, he actually had a pretty good year. 73 games with the Bay Sox, 274 plate appearances. Roberts hit 260 with a 336 on base, a 413 slugging had seven home runs, a 106 WRC plus, had kind of a breakout offensive year. Plus, he's known as a really good defensive catcher in the Orioles system, multiple pitchers. We've heard talk about how they like throwing to Cody Roberts. I'm surprised whatever the O's needed to do to protect him, they didn't do. And I don't know if he has a ceiling of being able to get to the minor leagues, but I think he was an important catcher depth in the minors. So hopefully he does get to the majors with the Phillies, but uh, the O's will miss him in the system. But again, a lot of these guys, in the minor league phase don't end up really being impact players, the major leagues. You never know. It could happen, but generally not the case. But speaking of impact players, the major leagues, many of them changing teams, signing new deals on Wednesday at the winter meetings, a busy day in baseball. And we'll talk about it and how it impacts the Orioles coming up next. So although the Orioles have only made one major league signing this offseason with a one-year $10 million deal to the starting pitcher Kyle Gibson, and they haven't done anything really at the winter meetings in San Diego so far, 
Doesn't mean the other teams have to be quiet too. And the other teams certainly were anything but quiet on Wednesday. Just a quick recap of kind of what went on in baseball on Wednesday. Well, obviously the big news was Aaron Judge. And after the John Heyman tweet that Arson Judge was close to signing with the Giants, we all thought he was going to San Francisco. Well, early in the morning, John Morosi broke it. Aaron Judge, nine years, $360 million to return to the Yankees, presumably will finish out his career in a Yankee uniform because he'll be 40 years old by the time that contract ends. Listen, I don't care about the years. I don't care about the money. Judge just won the MVP. He's ridiculous. Yankees needed to do anything they could to get him back, and that's what they did. I was really hoping he'd go to the Giants because it'd be funny to watch the Yankees fans be upset, and uh, I don't want O's pitchers to have to face Aaron Judge 14 games per year, but that's going to have to continue to happen for years and years to come. He was obviously the big name. I thought the judge signing would make a lot of other dominoes fall. Some dominoes fell after the judge signing, but not as many as I thought. On Wednesday, we had Masataka Yoshida, who was posted from the NPB in Japan, signed quickly, about a $100 million deal over five years with the Red Sox, left-handed hitting outfielder with a lot of pop. Not good for the O's, another great hitter in the division. We saw Wilson Contreras, kind of interesting, go from the Cubs and sign a five-year deal with the Cardinals to replace Yadier Molina and be their catcher. Kind of seemed like a perfect fit there in St. Louis. Red Sox also got Kenley Jansen on a two-year, $32 million deal to be their closer. Jansen's not as good as he was when he was with the Dodgers. Still did lead the big leagues in saves last year, so the Red Sox certainly getting better. Speaking of Red Sox, a former Red Sox sign, Matt Strom, the lefty, signed with the Phillies. And then you had a couple of starting pitchers who I think could have helped the Orioles went off the market as well. Jose Quintana, the left-hander at a bounce back year in St. Louis and Pittsburgh last year. He signed a two-year $25 million deal with the Mets. Certainly something I thought the O's could have done. And then Jamison Tyone, who the Orioles were very connected to. Mark Feinsand named the O's as one of the four finalists to get Tyone the other day. Well, he ends up signing with the Cubs, a four-year, $68 million deal, the right-hander going to Chicago, something I really thought the O's could have and should have paid to get Jamison Tyone. They did not do it, and he is now in Chicago. And, well, the starting pitching market, there's still guys there. Carlos Rodon, Orioles are connected there. He's still out there. Kodai Senga is still out there. Chris Bassett is still out there. You got some other kind of lower-tier guys, Sean Manaya, Nathan Eovaldi. Noah Syndergaard of the O's have spoken to, all still out there. So it's still a possibility, and hopefully they do bring in some pitching. But you're getting just just a tad bit more nervous as these guys kind of go off the board here. Now, Mike Elias did speak to the media on Wednesday night, talked about this stuff briefly. First, he kind of talked about the winter meetings being a gathering event and not exactly where all the transactions happen He said they're going to resume talks when they get home. They're going to continue to target starting pitching, left-handed bats, and also said that he is talking to multiple starting pitchers about multi-year deals, so that's definitely good, and hopefully that turns into some actual deals that the Orioles make. And he said our goal is to make the playoffs, and he said that the payroll will increase steadily this offseason. So we'll see what that means if the O's move forward, but it looks like the Orioles are going to leave San Diego without bringing in a major league free agent at the winter meetings. Not saying you have to, there's still some big names out there. They could certainly still swing a trade for a starting pitcher as well, but we would like to get in on some of these guys. And some of these guys are certainly off the list at this point, but the question then becomes, well, the O's leave the winter meetings kind of empty handed who is left for the O's. There's still some big names out there, not only the pitchers, but You know, three of the four big shortstops in Bogarts, Cray, and Swanson still left unsigned as well that the Orioles could go after. Some big outfielders like Brantley and Brandon Nimmo still out there as well. So definitely some guys for the Orioles to still bring in and help this team heading into 2023. But the question is, who is out there and who is most likely for the Orioles to go after now that the winter meetings are over? I'm going to answer that question coming up on tomorrow's episode, a little free agent Friday episode of the pod to finish out the week. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.